Let's talk inheritance using a case study called Projectile Slingers. And what it is, is I want you to write a game. Specifically in that game, I want you to write characters that project something. And so if you sat down and said, what is the first character that I want to create? Let's say that you wanted to create Laser Man. And so you'd have to think about two things. What does Laser Man have and what can Laser Man do? First, Laser Man has a level and he has a number of charges or how many lasers he can shoot. Secondly, what can he do? He can run, he can jump, and most importantly, he can shoot lasers from his eyes. Now, let's say that you wanted to create a second character. That character is going to be called Arrow Man. And what does Arrow Man have? He has a level and he also has the number of arrows he can shoot. What can Arrow Man do? He can run, he can jump, and he can also shoot arrows. Now as you're writing this program, hopefully you can see that there's some commonality between Laser Man and Arrow Man. One of those commonalities is they both have a level. And for our game, the level is going to work the exact same way. You get a certain number of experience points and you go to the next level. It doesn't matter what kind of character you are, whether you're Laser Man or Arrow Man. Another commonality is running and jumping. Well, Laser Man and Arrow Man can run and jump the exact same way. So if we have the exact same attributes and the exact same methods, at least some of them inside of the classes, we could actually use inheritance to better write these characters out. We could create a third class called the character class. And what the character class is going to do is it's going to contain the attributes and methods common to both Laser Man and Arrow Man. So that would be level, run, and jump. So if we consolidated them, they'd look something like this. So now, Laser Man only contains attributes that are specific to him. How many charges of his laser does he have? and the action of shooting his laser. Same thing with Arrow Man. How many arrows does he have? And the action of him actually shooting the arrow. But what's important is we've taken the common attributes and methods and put them inside of another class that both Arrow Man and Laser Man are going to have access to. And it contains level, running, and jumping. And so now, if we wanted to create another character that both runs and jumps and has a level, it too could use the character class. And so how would we link them? Well, through inheritance, we're going to create an is a relationship. So Arrow Man is a character and Laser Man is a character. Laser Man and Arrow Man would both be subclasses and character would be a superclass. What I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how we could do this in actual Java code. So we're going to stop talking in the abstract and we're going to get specifically into how inheritance code is written. So what we're going to start with is the character class, and I've called it character1. And what did we say that the character class has? It has a level. And I've also wrote a getter method called getLevel, which its job is to simply return the level of the current character. Character1 is going to be our superclass. Next, what we're going to write is we're going to write the laser man class. And the laser man has as its instance variable num charges, or how many laser charges can it shoot? And then I wrote a getter, which returns the number of laser charges it has left. And laser man one is going to be our subclass. And so what we want to do is we want to create laser man is a character. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have to do something specific in the code to link the two together. And it's going to be the code laserman1 extends character1. And that's going to create our inherited relationship. So if we want to see how this relationship plays out, we would write a runner method that's going to utilize both the character and the laserman class. Now, what I'm going to do first is create an object of the super class. And we can see what level character one is by utilizing the get level method. And the output would be level one equals zero. But if we tried to see how many charges a character has, we would get an error. 
And the reason is, get charges is part of the subclass, not the superclass. A superclass cannot use the features of a subclass. It only works the other way around. So let's try it with a subclass object instead of the superclass. So we say laserman1 laser equals new laserman1. Then we say level and we concatenate on laser.getLevel. And this is kind of odd because we are not using a method of the subclass. What we're doing is using a method of the superclass. But this would work 100% because LaserMan is a character and therefore can use the features of its super class. And so therefore, when we say system out print line level, it would say level equals zero because it hasn't been set yet. Next, we could say charges equals laser dot get charges. And we would get level equals zero from the previous line and charges equals zero. So you can see that LaserMan is using the features of its superclass, and it's also using its own features, as in get charges. And so this is the basics of inheritance. So as we saw in the beginning slides, what inheritance does is it groups common attributes and methods for other classes to use later, saying, hey, you both are doing the same thing. Why don't we group them together? write them all in the superclass, and then the subclasses can utilize them. The way that you link the two together is using the keyword extends. And so when you say something like LaserMan extends character, what you're doing is you're giving LaserMan access to all of the characters, methods, and attributes. As we also showed, just because something is a subclass does not mean that the superclass can access it. So if you try to use the features of a subclass, it's not going to work, and that's not inheritance. But what inheritance is, is the subclass can now use the features of a superclass. So hopefully you can start to see the power of inheritance and the amazing ability to take the features of one class and use them in multiple different classes. Therefore, you're not having to reinvent the wheel on every single class that you write. Inheritance is one of the cornerstones of Java, and understanding its basic syntax will help a programmer connect classes in a meaningful and useful way. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.